Hey guys, my jam. So, yeah, got my journal here. <laughs> my lucky journal. <laughs> so, once again, a uh, story time douchebag. Uh, I mean, because, like I keep saying, it definitely is helping talking about these stories getting off of my chest. And if you guys feel like you need to do the same thing, but you don't want people to watch your videos, you could always do videos and make them private on YouTube so people don't see it. Like I said, pretty much everybody in my family knows that I was a player and they know all these stories or they've seen all these guys or they, they know my past. So, like, I'm not hiding it from anyone. I never did growing up. <laughs> like I keep saying, I'm actually pretty proud of being a player <clears throat> because I was so young back then. And not so many people could... Especially for girls, like guys, yeah, a lot of guys are pretty play or players, but a lot of girls can't really be players and get away with it, kind of thing. Because they were so shy. So many girls are so shy. At least the girls that I know were like really shy. And I'm a tom. I was a tomboy growing up. Still am a tomboy. So that's why I got around. <laughs> Basically, I guess because. I was like one of the guys, and guys like to go for the chase and be to be with different people and stuff like that. So, like I said, I was exactly like that too growing up. And like I keep saying, I don't care if people don't believe me or not. So, like I said, my family knows, my friends know, Connie knows. <laughs> so, I know people do know. And like I said, it's more. The reason why I'm doing these videos is because my counselor keeps telling me that I got I should do these videos, like confirm it with me to uh, get it off my chest. And then if other people hear these videos, then it also helps them to not feel like they're the only ones that have been played or the only ones that also played the field kind of thing. <laughs> so... Like I said, I know if you look at me now, people are like, oh, you could have been a player because you have no teeth and this and that. And I'm like, this is when I was, like, young. So, back in the day, I was actually pretty attractive. Like, I'm still pretty attractive if I want to be, like, get dressed up and all that. You guys have seen the photos. Like I said, I just don't really care anymore because, once again, I got conditions and I got disabilities. It's so gets worse with age. I've dated. I've been there, done that. So it's <laughs> yeah. So, but it really does help to uh, talk about these things. And I got my coffee here. I also have my pliers and my jacket behind me because I'm trying to figure out the zipper thing. So I'm gonna do that this at the same time. A story time I've also been kind of clearing off the table a bit before I go in and out for smokes in case my friends come by but then I'm like they know my place is a mess so it's not like it's a guy so <laughs> or a guy that I'm trying to impress so yeah I gotta fix the pockets here the zipper so I'm gonna try to do it myself I don't know if I can or not but we'll see so I think this one this one fine yeah, because some of them, because I watched a few videos on YouTube about it, using pliers. Apparently, you could use a fork, too, but, yeah, so this one zips up and down. So this one's fine. But, this one, this is my heated jacket, by the way, so that's why I'm like, I need my zipper, because when I got the dollar store the other day, because it keeps coming apart down at the bottom. Like this one, like you can see right now, it's like already a perf. And I just zipped it up, so that's why I got, I'm like, I gotta fix these pockets, because then I can't have my cell phone in it. Otherwise, my cell phone's gonna get stuck. <laughs> it like goes down. Oh, this is gonna annoy me. I don't know if I can fix it. But <clears throat> I'm gonna try, anyways. And do story time at the same time. I'm trying with this zipper first, so then that way, if I break it, I'm not gonna try with the other one. How do you go the. Let's 
see. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's... Actually, I think it might be completely broken because the bottom part doesn't have the seal here. But let's see. Even if I could break it off, it'd be a little easier. So this is my first time using pliers, too. So, I'll give it a... Give it a real... Give it a try. And you're supposed to do it very, like, light, not too, too light. Yeah, that did nothing. It's oh, kind of frustrating. So, like, if I could get it down. I don't want to bug people to, like, fix it. And apparently, there's a place that you could go and pay somebody 25 bucks to do it. But I'm like, I'd rather just buy pliers and try to figure it out on my own. <laughs> and then, if worst comes to worst, I'll just get a whole new zipper, I guess. And then do it again. But yeah. Maybe it's not working. It's not doing anything that I want it to do. <laughs> well, it kind of did it a little bit. I can actually pull it down now. And apparently if you use... I think it was a pen. And I know I'm kind of like putting two videos in one, but it's just easier that way. I'm not going to do a short video on me fixing my jacket. <laughs> Trying to fix my jacket and do story time in another video. I don't know, too many interesting scenes. Weird. So anyways, yeah, we gotta talk about Cody. Ah, I fixed it. Yay, so it does work. Although it's still kind of a bit, so let's just try this one. So yeah, anyways, if you guys don't know the story about Cody, <laughs> the bartender. So this was before Nat, and he's a bartender, well he was a bartender in Victoria, which is a lot, one reason why I used to go all the time. So let's try this jacket first. And... So yeah, once again, because I used to work for like a week, and then I for like two weeks at Tysol, and then I take two weeks off to go to. Well, actually, now it's working. No, see, right at the bottom. <laughs> I don't know why it opens. So this, I don't know if I can fix. It might just be the zipper. I might have to look into more videos because <laughs> I've asked them live and nobody. Nobody said anything. But yeah, I don't like how I can't zip it up because it kind of beats the purpose of a heated, heated jacket. Have a battery pack in it and then not have, can't zip it up. <laughs> so what was I saying? Oh yeah, Cody. So Cody is a bartender that I like before Nat. This is why I was like, I wonder if anything would have happened. My life would have been different if I ended up with this guy. But obviously, I guess things worked out for the way it was supposed to. And I got speckles. So in the end, everything, like I keep saying, everything. I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. Which is why I'm like, sometimes I wonder, but at the same time. So yeah, I've talked about Cody many, many times because I'm still not over it. <laughs> still not over it. Even though we never hooked up, which is why, and I still have, still have a crush on him till this day. I still think he's gorgeous, but he's not in Victoria anymore because he's uh, fighting in Israel, apparently. Because I still check check up on him. 
So yeah, anyways, uh, he is a bartender, but I didn't know that he was a bartender. That's not how we met. <laughs> I actually, actually, I, uh, blah, blah. I was actually staying at Ocean Backpackers in Victoria for my birthday because I couldn't afford a hotel. So that's why I tried doing the backpackers thing. It was not too bad. The only problem. Is it's like two hundred dollars a night for this hostel, or like a hundred bucks a night, and you only get a bed and like a small cup, little fridge, but you get to share the kitchen with people, and you get to share like the lounge and uh, there's board games and stuff like that, and there's a bar, and then you get like free food if you want sometimes at the bar, but I'm vegan so. There's nothing that I could really have. So yeah, I stayed at Ocean Backpackers, but it's, I mean, for 200, it was like 100 bucks per night, 200. Like I said, I could stay at James Bay Inn for three nights. I would stay at a small little room. Well, not a small room, sorry. <clears throat> it's like a mini apartment, basically. The only problem is that I have stairs, <laughs> but... You get a big microwave, you get a big living room, you could have people over, you have your own entranceway so I don't have to keep pushing on the door to get in, which pretty much at every single hotel you have to do, especially since I'm a smoker. <laughs> and at Ocean Backpackers, there's stairs, so I had to change rooms. So I'm like, I'm not going up and down the stairs every time I need to smoke. <laughs> and, uh, the... They didn't have a microwave in the room, but they had a mini fridge. And then you could use a microwave in the fridge, uh, in the kitchen. So that's why I don't really like it. Because like I said, at James Bay Inn for three nights, you could stay for $600 for three nights. But it's like a small, literally a small mini apartment. You get a bathtub, you get a big bed, you get a big, like, living area. It's so cool. I have videos actually on it. <clears throat> Whole kitchen. So, to me, it was worth it, like, the, and having a microwave, that's the main thing, <laughs> like, so many hotels, like, not even Strip, not even Strip Tona, and that's, like, one of the most popular hotels, I'm like, they don't even have a stinking microwave, so I don't get why it's so popular, but I think it's popular because there's a bar downstairs, <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, um, so yeah, I was staying at Ocean Backpackers because I couldn't afford the I didn't know about James Bay Inn yet. And I couldn't afford a hotel, which is why my friend Lisa, who might be visiting later tonight, we actually met because she was a, she worked at Travel Inn, and that was one of the main hotels that I used to always go to, to go stay at. <laughs> which is funny because it's literally right by the Mint, which is where Cody worked. So... It was kind of funny, but me and Lisa, we weren't friends until after, uh, after I was traveling in Victoria a lot. And now we're, like, sisters, so hopefully you guys can meet her today. We'll see. Oh, uh, but yeah, so then, so that's why I'm bringing up, um, travel in, because I would say I travel in all the time. And then the mint's close by. So, but then I was staying at Ocean Backpackers when I met Cody. And he's a tall, skinny, white guy. Really, really hot. <laughs> I really don't want to show any more photos just to be on the safe side. Like, nothing happened between us. And this is why I'm so mad that nothing happened. But, yeah. So, I still have a crush on him to this day. But, um... What was I saying? So, yeah. I went to Ocean Backpackers for my birthday. And then he used to work at Ocean Backpackers as a bartender. So, he was actually visiting when I was staying there. And I was actually cooking in the kitchen. When I first started to, like, get into cooking and all that. So, then I noticed him walking by because he's fucking hot. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse, excuse my language, but he's freaking hot. I don't know. Should I actually... 
Maybe I will show you this photo. I don't, I mean, at this point in time, I don't really care if he sees, because he knows that I still like him, probably, most likely. And like I said, he's not in Victoria anymore. I just had to find it on Facebook. So yeah, anyways, you'll see how gorgeous he is. <laughs> I showed it on live before it came. <laughs> so, uh, what was I saying? So yeah, I met him because he used to work at Ocean Backpackers. And, uh, I went out for, so, first I noticed him and he was talking a lot to people. And then I was like, this guy is so hot. But, uh, still pretty, I'm like, shy, but not that shy. Like, I don't know, when you, you know, when you see a guy that you literally like and it's hard to talk to them, it's like, oh, that's, that was, that's how I feel about <laughs> So, I'm just trying to find his photo for you. He is pretty hot, though. I <laughs> do that to me. I still have a crush on him. So, yeah. So, we, we met at Ocean... Like I said, he was he used to work at Ocean Backpackers. He was actually... Um, smoking outside. So, I went outside to go have a smoke. And I started talking with him. But I don't remember, like, talking that much about to him. And I didn't know his name or anything. But apparently I told him all about the ghost stories and what I was doing with Victoria and it was my birthday and all that stuff, so. <laughs> I was like, okay. So, yeah, so then, oops, after that, I ended up uh, going to, yeah, because he left. And then I heard his name was Cody. So I was like, oh. So I'm gonna look him up. I'm gonna look him up on Facebook and see if I can find him. And I, all I know is that his name's Cody. <laughs> I didn't know his last name. I didn't know anything. I knew that he used to work at Ocean Backpackers, and that's why he was hanging out there. So I just did a search for Cody, and I couldn't find anything. Then I did a search for Ocean Backpackers, and then I found him because under uh, Facebook you could say. <clears throat> what you do for a job or where you used to work. So for mine, I still say that I used to work at Tysol and I used to work at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, all those places. So if you do a search, you could probably find me. I don't hide my Facebook. It's Mary Joseph Mark Martin. There's a link on uh, my thing, but so that's why I go, I have a photo of Cody on my Facebook. <laughs> I'm just trying to find it here because there's so many photos. So then, yeah, so I was trying to find him, so then I found him. And then on his profile, it says that he works at the Mint in Victoria, B.C. So I was like, hmm, he works at the Mint. So I was like, well, first I'm going to send him a message and see if he responds. He doesn't. So then I'm like, so then I go home, go back to Victoria. I'm like, hmm, should I send him another message to see if he'll respond? <laughs> Sent him another message, he didn't respond. This is the guy that I was talking about who, uh, said, sorry I didn't get your message right away, it's not that I wasn't interested, I was just busy. That guy that I talked about in, like, one of my Jewish bike story times, <laughs> saying where, uh, if you think that guy isn't interested, it's not that they're not interested, it's just, it's just they don't have the time to check messages sometimes. And you could actually see, like, if they checked your message or not. So, yeah. So, anyway, so, so then we finally uh, started talking. But then I was home from Victoria, and I was taking... I couldn't really afford going as much because, I, like I said, I was on disability. So, I would usually go... Payday is usually the last Wednesday of every month. So, then I would go to... I'd worked for two weeks at Tysol, and then I would take two weeks off because at the end of the month, I got my disability check, so then I had my money from Tysol, plus I had the money from disability after paying bills and stuff like that. And I only had two cats, so, and like, uh, things were not expensive as they are now, like now I can't even afford going to 
and going to uh, Victoria because it's just so bloody expensive. I don't know what that noise is from. It must be fashion, but... <laughs> so, yeah. So then I was already home, so um, he was talking to me, and he's like, oh, so... So he said, sorry, I didn't get your message. Oh, no, wait, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. So, yeah, I go keep going to Victoria a few times. Then I'd be talking to the Victoria single group, and I'd be like, hey, I've had this. It's now been a year since I met Cody at Ocean Backpackers. <laughs> One year. <laughs> One freaking year. After going there, like, every single few months. Because I didn't have the nerve to go talk to him. I was like, I knew where he worked, but I didn't want to look like a stalker. Because you guys know how people are like, oh, you're a stalker, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh, I want to I wanna go see him, but I don't want him to think that I'm a stalker and oh, I don't know what to do. So then I told the groups and stuff like that, and they're like, oh, you should just go to his work and talk to him. Just tell him that you found him on Facebook. On Facebook. <laughs> so then I'd be like, okay, fine. So, trying to find a good angle of Cody. The me and Cody. Um, I guess that's the only photo. <laughs> we both look drunk here. So yeah, I asked the group, so I was like, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? So, I was like, kept going to Victoria, kept going to Victoria, didn't, didn't bother going by the Mint, even though I knew that he worked there. Even though I was staying at Travel Inn, which was literally not even, like, a block away from the Mint. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, should I show this photo again? And then, so, yeah, uh, he was not even a block away from the Mint. So then I was like, so then one day I got drunk. Because I was... Like I said, I didn't really know anybody for Victoria yet. So, I was just basically doing stuff about Matthew Big B. So then I went to the Garrick pub, I went to all these other pubs. I was just like, oh, should I go to the Mint? Should I go to the Mint? Should I go to the Mint? <laughs> One year later, after meeting him, I finally get the courage to go to the Mint. <laughs> After one year of going back and forth saying, should I go, should I go, should I go, asking people, should I go. So I'll show you a photo of Cody. Because now you understand. <laughs> you guys might already know this if you guys follow me. Oops. Trying to make it bigger. But, uh, there you go. So that is Cody. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could see him. They get the dimples. I mean, come on, he's hot. <laughs> but I blew it. So there's me and him. So yeah, oh, I, I'm still like so madly crazy about him, but he's not in. Victoria anymore and I tried messaging him and yeah, unfortunately just last I heard he was in Israel fighting Who knows if he's still fighting or not, but that's Cody Still have a major thing for him And uh, yeah, so then one year after I finally go to the event and I have three shots of tequila and I'm like Okay, it's also my birthday <laughs> I'm like should I go? Should I go? Should I go? So then my friend talked me into it. Because I'm like, I'm probably not going to come back to Victoria for like a couple months. Because I can't afford it. So then I see him locking stuff up. Because he used to work there. So then I go up to him and I'm like, so I don't know if you remember me. <laughs> but it's about a year ago that we met. And I met, yeah, Ocean Backpackers when I was staying there. He was like, yeah, I remember you. 
<laughs> and, I, and he's like, I remember you telling me that you were here to do ghost stories and about Matthew Bigby. And I was like, so curious about Matthew Bigby. So I was asking you about him. I was like, I don't even remember that. <laughs> but apparently, I told, I guess I was drunk at at the when I met him. <laughs> But he's like, one year later, so I'm like, oh, it took me one year just to get the guts, guts to go talk to him again. And I was like, I don't want to look like a stalker. So that's why I go, okay. So, so yeah, he didn't care. He was like, that's, that's cool. So then <coughs> I asked him, did you want my number? So we could meet up before I go. And then he's like, yeah, yeah, I want your number, I want your number. So then I give him my number. And then I leave. I was so, so drunk. <laughs> and I was so freaking nervous. Like, just staring at his photo. I'm like, oh my god. He's, he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. But, uh, yeah, so I blew it. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but, yeah, so I gave him my number. And uh, I didn't hear from him. So I went back home. And then when I got home, I found him on Instagram. And then I sent him a message on Instagram. So again, here are people are like, Oh, you're such a stalker because you message people so much and you leave so many comments. Eventually, they get a hold of you and they're not mad. Like, Cody was never mad at me for messaging him. He actually wanted me to message him because he lost my number <laughs> when I gave it to him. So he's like, I'm so glad that you messaged me. So, yeah, when people, like I said, there's a difference between a stalker and just being interested in somebody trying to get a hold of them so you could, like, meet up. It's not that big of a deal. If they're, if they don't want anything to do with you, they will tell you. Hopefully. Or they will ignore you or block you or whatever, but he never did. And like I said, he said... Sorry, I never got, um, a whole, or sorry, I never messaged you back, but I never go on Instagram or Facebook, and I just got your message, and I lost your number, <clears throat> so I'm glad that you messaged me, <laughs> which is still kind of, still bizarre, still bizarre, oh, my goodness, this guy is so gorgeous, but, <laughs> so yeah, uh, so then we ended up talking <clears throat> quite a lot. Actually, we ended up talking for two nights. I thought, it was, yeah, two nights straight. He even sent me uh, nudes, <laughs> and I I didn't send him any nudes, but I sent him like sexy photos of me in my laundry and stuff, which you guys have seen because I post them. <laughs> I'm not scared of doing that. And, uh, like I said, we were talking, like, non-stop over and over again, and so he gave me his phone number. And then he wanted to, uh, keep talking to me. So I'd keep texting him. And then, but for two nights straight, we were, like, non-stop talking to each other. And this is why I'm mad about everything. Sorry, I've been talking way too much. <laughs> this might be a two-parter video. Because <laughs> there's mo way more to the story than what I've told you guys <laughs> so far on uh, lives and stuff. This is a detailed version. So yeah, like I said, I was talking to him like, quite a lot, and then we were going to hook up and everything like that, but then apparently she got injured, um, a keg fell on him, so I was like, oh, I'm going to come to Victoria and I'll, I'll come visit you in the hospital and I'll come see you and stuff like that, and at first he thought it was sweet, he's like, oh, that's nice, and then... I asked him, I told him, I'm coming to Victoria next week, so could I come see you in the hospital? And he's like, oh no, I'm not in the hospital anymore. So I'm like, oh, okay. So could I still come see you? And he's like, well, actually, 
you've been texting me too much <laughs> and talking to me, to, me, to me too much on the computer, even though we talked for two days straight <clears throat> overnight, and he's sending me personal videos and photos. He even sent me a video of him with no shirt on. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like blown away, but <laughs> yeah. so I guess maybe that's why I kind of like text him a little too much. And like I said, this is finally when I wasn't really a player, like I was a player, but I was like dating guys at the same time. And we'd like it ended up being a relationship, like with Nat, like what happened with Nat kind of thing. <laughs> Like, I kind of wanted to go somewhere at this point in time for the next relationship. So, I guess he kind of read that. I guess maybe when we met. Since I was, like, a player, he kind of liked that. <laughs> but then now, he's like, he was different. So, I was like, oh. So, I was like, so he told me, yeah, I text him too much. And not to come see him, not to talk to him. Stuff like that. I was like, oh, I really wanted to see him. And I was actually on my, actually when he texted me this, I was actually on my way to Victoria. Because I had rented, or rented a night over at the, what is it called? Bedford Regency Hotel, and I actually got to stay overnight in the haunted room. First time I got to stay at the hotel, and then the second time I got to stay at, in the haunted room that I booked, and it was just for one night. But it was really, really cool. I was like, oh, so excited. But so I was like, hey, I'm coming to Victoria. Can I come see you? And then that's when he said I text him too much, so no, he didn't want to date, really see me or anything like that. <clears throat> but there's more to the story, <laughs> so this is going to be a two-parter. So, yeah, stay tuned for more. <laughs> and I'm still trying to figure out this jacket, but yeah, I felt kind of nervous for actually sharing all this stuff. But at the same time, I'm like, he knows, so... Yeah, more of Cody, more of Cody the bartender to come. <laughs>